This movie is shockingly twisted, but not innocent. Doria, that's the glory of love. What's up, Hellraiser? Welcome back to yet again another movie review. Welcome to Orphan Folk Kill 2022. Man. I remember when this movie first came out on Paramount Plus and I walked it day one and fell in love with it. Walked it again. Loved it even more. And now this is my third time watching this movie. And boy, isn't this movie good. But before we get into all the good, the bad, and the ugly, let me give you a little bit of plot of what this movie is about. This movie tells a story about the beginning of Esther from 2009 and basically they're going to show you how it all started. They're going to show you her first kill. They're going to show you her in this in this cycle war and the movie turned into a cat and mouse game between her and her mother. So to kick things off with my first pro, I don't want to waste any time because there's a lot to talk about when it comes down to this movie. But to kick things off with my first pro will have to be Isabella Foreman. I honestly love her in this movie just like um in the original film from 2009. By the way I did review that one. But honestly it's good to see her taking on that wall again, stepping back into that wall. And you can tell she had a lot of fucking fun getting back into that wall. And it looks like she never missed a beat. It seems like they, they call her up and she said, yes, I do it. And then easily she snapped right back into that fucking wall. In the original film, she was actually a legit nine-year-old little girl. And now in this one, she's actually a grown-ass woman. And I do like how she was able to add something new to the character. It wasn't just, a, excuse me, it just wasn't the same thing, excuse me, boy. And so it was easy for her just to adapt right back into that role. And another pro for me would have to be adding Julia Stiles to the, was a great um, addition to the story. Not to mention the fact that Julia Stiles had a lot of fucking fun with this too. I would truly say her performance as a mother who lost a child was a bit kind of odd because you knew it was something off about her entire fucking performance, which we'll get into when it comes down to the spoiler session, so you free for right now. But honestly, her performance as, as the concerning mother was very odd for me, and I'm going to lose something creepy about that. But anyway, adding Julia Stiles to it was just a great first breath of air, and I do really, I really do enjoy her in this film. However, we'll get to her in the con. Another pro for me would have to be the whole cat and mouse game between Esther and her mother. Honestly, this movie goes into a lot of twisted fucking direction that you would never see coming. So, throughout the entire runtime of the movie, you got the daughter torn around with the mother, and the mother torn around with the daughter, and then you got the son all up in the mix of it, which we'll get to into the con. But honestly, I do like this whole cat and mouse game. The once the movie starts to pick up, I guess you would say that twist that that's gonna be revealed into our spoiler. But it's definitely a good fucking thing to do because I'm thinking, oh boy, here we go. So they just gonna redo the first film all over again from 2009. Give me the same thing. But no, they pulled the rug from underneath your fucking feet, and you never see it coming. And another pro for me would have to be that sweet corner candy, baby. Yes, that's right. They got a lot of bloody shit in this movie, and I love it. This movie, it made up for that one kill in the first film, which wasn't that big of a deal for me. But in this film, it made up for that one kill that was in the first film. And in this film, it's a lot more graphic, a lot more brutal, and I love it. There is a lot of corner candy. You just have to watch it to see it for yourself, and it is bloody as hell, and I am so satisfied for that. Now, here's the part where we start to lean into a little bit of spoiler. Okay, now, we're about to get into some spoiler with the movie. If you haven't seen it, this is the part where you fast forward the video, or you click it off, go watch the movie, and then come back. So, let's get into some spoiler. So, the whole cat and mouse game came about when Esther quickly realized that the mother hired a detective to find her daughter. But little by Esther know that the mother know that she's not her daughter. All along, Julia Star character knew that that wasn't her daughter. And so what ended up happening here is that right after Esther found out that this detective was investigating her, she went to his house to kill him. And 
um, right before he died, Esther said to him, my own mother didn't even know it was that I'm not her daughter. How the hell did you know? And then the detective said, well, she do know. And then she put, she, she, I mean, she empty rounds into his body. And that's when the mother turned around. Well, that's when Esther turned around after she heard her mother speak and said, I do know. And from there on out, it just became a straight up cat and mouse game. Esther literally took a dead rat and blended it in like some type of smoothie that she made for the mother. Uh, Esther tried to put her mother off the fucking train track. I believe that was her brother. And all of a sudden, the mother knew what she was about to do. And did she end up turning her around? Did she end up putting her, like, the stuff around her neck? Tighten it up? Tighten up the dress? I mean, this movie goes in crazy fucking direction. One of my favorite kills will have to be when she was in the fucking, uh, at Sightum. And then she threw that candy down. And she was like, hey, want some candy? She like the little crazy lady. And then she just unleashed hell on this fucking, uh, cop. Speaking of the cop, there's a scene in here where, um... The cop opened the door, which is kind of fucking weird, very, very fucking weird, knowing the fact that she's playing a little girl, and the cop went in the room thinking he was going to get some, if you know what I mean, and it just, yeah, it kind of feels a little off to me, but even though she's a grown woman, just knowing the fact that this takes place before the first movie, and another thing that I want to spoil, there's a lot of details hidden in the background. For example, there is a scene in here where they show a phone, and it's got the very, very first ever iPhone. Yeah, so this movie pretty much telling you that it's taking place before the first film, because the first film was made in 2009. So this is supposed to take place between 2007, no, between 2006 and 7. Moving on to the next spoiler section I want to talk about is at the end of the movie. So at the end of the movie, so after the entire cat and mouse game came about, you got the mother and the daughter fighting, okay? After after she just done killed the son, okay? Now she wants to kill the mother so she can have the father to herself, which we'll get to into the con. And so the father, well, they ended up on the roof, and they on the edge of her like the roof. And they both holding on. And so the father trying to get on the roof so he can save them. And all of a sudden, the movie did the unspeakable. The mother was the one that let go. But Esther lived on. So they obviously setting up for Orphan 3. So yeah, they just confirmed this on Twitter. At the time of recording this video, this is the thing. So they basically setting up for Orphan 3, which I can't wait to see. And another pro for me would have to be the atmosphere. I love the lighting. It kind of poke at the original film because the, in the original film there's a lot of purple and blue lit and pink light all over the fucking place. In this film they kept that same atmosphere and I love the original movie for that. And in this film it's the same fucking thing. That little pink, blue, purple little fucking lighting. And there's a scene in here where Esther flicking the light and then she keep on going real fast and fast and fast and it just looks so fucking great. I love the atmosphere in this movie. And another pro for me would have to be the writing. The writing in this film is a lot much more stronger in this film than it was in the first one. Because you can tell that they, they just had fun. They wanted to make another film and they knew exactly what they wanted to do. And they nailed it. However, the writing gets better and better. However, there's a spot where it actually starts to drag. But I don't mind that because the movie picks it right back up because it keeps on fucking going. And to go along with that writing will have to be, not only the writing is strong, but they they kind of add that twist, which we already talk about in the spoiler section, but they add that twist to kind of give you something different, because the movie basically play out as if like you already know what's about to happen, and boy do they pull the word from underneath your fucking feet, because you never see it coming. And then when they finally reveal the twist right in the middle of the movie, that's when the movie tension picks up. Now, moving on into the cons, we have to be Julia Stiles' character. Now, even though I do like her performance, but there was a scene in here where she immediately knew um, that, that she got the call saying that her daughter was alive. And so she goes see her daughter. And immediately, she didn't even, like, like, you knew it was something off about her, the mother, the moment she sees her daughter. And so when you do get to see the scene where her and her daughter reunite, she doesn't really act like a, a real mother would act like as if like they lost their child for so long. 
And so she didn't embrace her to kind of throw us off to make us think that this is going to be something different. Because the moment that the movie started and then you see uh, when she show up and she does not embrace her daughter, hug her so tight, I immediately knew, okay, this is... This is not going to go well because Julia doesn't really connect with her. Another con for me would have to be the brother. I think that the performance of the uh, like the boy who portrayed the, the, uh, the brother in the movie is terrible fucking acting. I feel like he went too overboard with his performance. There's a scene in here where he's basically a straight up fucking dick. Even though the movie kind of indicated that he might have killed his sister, his real sister. And so in this film, it's just like... Okay, the acting is just off, is what I'm trying to say. I don't like his acting at all. A final con would have to be the father. The father in this film is just as bland as the father in the first film from 2009. The father in this film, he just, he has no flavor at all. He basically just there for filler. And he basically has been looking for his daughter for so long. And it just feels like they could have easily just erased him out of this movie. And this movie still would have been a hell of a lot better with or without him. But the fact that they put him there, it wasn't nothing there. His acting was terrible. I didn't like the acting at all. None of his dialogue was believable. My overall thoughts is that Orphan First Kill is a blast to watch. I'm giving this movie a straight up A fucking plus. I love this fucking movie. If y'all haven't seen this movie, check it out on Paramount Plus. Despite all the, all the cons that I have, it's still a fucking good ass fucking movie. I just wish that they did not decide to face for the mother. That's all I'm going to have to say with that. But anyway, hell is it. That's going to wrap up today's specific review. If you want to get in touch with your boy, all social media links will be in the description down below. And at the time of recording this video, 220 to 7. Wow. Thank you so much. So, that's pretty much going to wrap this video up. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel and... Turn on that fucking bell notification so that way when I drop another lit video for the channel, you'll be the first one to get it. And I hope to catch you here in the next video. Peace.